everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Smile with Dr. Mark. Welcome. Thanks for joining me again today. Thanks for having me. So I was thinking it's getting it's supposed to get like 40 out there or something. So any plans for the summer? Anything going I'm on? I'm going to get in that big body of water. Are you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Paddleboard and just fall in the lake. Yeah, that's what we talked about yesterday with someone here and saying that. Why would we leave in the summer when we have this? Though? <laughs> the only reason to leave is if it catches on fire. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah, exactly. Not going to So um, a few things we're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, as always, I surprise you. I don't tell you what we're going to talk about. So we're going to jump look, in and talk about it. Look forward to it. Um, so I want to start because I thought it would be kind of fun. Maybe it make this a little bit of a, an episode or sort of thing for the episodes where we talk about the Internet's most asked questions. Okay. So I looked up three or four, and I thought, oh, some funny ones or some good ones, some interesting ones. So so I thought we started. This one isn't funny. It's just kind of interesting because I do this. So why do I grind my teeth? That was one of the top questions. Oh. And I'm like, that's interesting because I do that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the quick and dirty answer that people will usually gravitate toward will be stress. Um, my particular take on stress is stress is the volume knob on your radio. It's not the tuning knob. So if you're trying to figure out why you grind your teeth, Usually it's going to be an imbalance between uh, where your teeth fit and your teeth come together some two, two and a half thousand times a day Right. versus, you know, if my muscles were perfectly relaxed, let's say you had no teeth and we we're making dentures yeah. and we had to relax your muscles and put your jaw bones in the right spot in the right relationship. That's where we put the teeth um, due to a lot of reasons. Your teeth don't always get to where they're supposed to go. So right. teeth need to fit together. Muscles and bones want to relax. Teeth need to fit together and back and forth you go. Hmm. The more stress you add to the mix, the more volume on that station. So, and, so in, and, I, and I assume if you grind your teeth, are you, are you actually literally grinding them down when you grind at night? Yeah, yeah. You're losing like. Part so of the your enamel teeth. on your teeth is the hardest part of your body. It's harder than your bones by far. I often joke and say that's why dentists get invited to plane crashes because <laughs> um, sometimes that's how you identify people. Yeah. Um, however, there's only three ways that I'm aware of to get rid of enamel. So one of them is bulk force trauma. So you think right. uh, hockey puck steering wheel, right, uh, right. you know, some sort of horrific uh, incident. Number two would be dentist in his or her infinite wisdom grinding them down with a, a drill. Got it. Uh, third one would be rock polish. Huh. So enamel on enamel. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Um, next question is what causes tooth sensitivity? There's yeah. There's lots of. There <laughs> are a few. Okay. So uh, three probably most common ones would be you've got uh, cavity, right? Mm -hmm. um, sensitivity, you, what you have to do is be getting to the nerve or right, the nerve right, endings right. inside yep. the tooth. Okay. So, so there's a breach in the shell right. uh, somewhere. So it, Crack, fracture, cavity would be uh, high up on the on the list. But getting back to your first internet question, if you're grinding your teeth, you can literally bruise the nerve inside and, and that can produce sensitivity. So like having a sliver in your hand, right? If you touch anywhere on your hand, it's disproportionately right. sensitive. Like it shouldn't hurt, but it does. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, this one was a funny one, I thought. This is like in the top 10. I thought I got to ask this because it's so not relevant but relevant does your dental office have parking and i'm like that's an interesting question that that has, that people yeah. would ask on the internet but i'm like well it makes sense actually no it's a good it's yeah. a good question um you know in our little neck of the woods where yeah. our office is you know new buildings going up all the time right. uh it's there's parking but it's it's limited right um you know i, I think they're trying to maximize the footprints mm. of buildings and minimize the amounts of uh, space given over to parking so it is a little bit of a challenge but there are always solutions and how dare you make me walk more than a block to come right to your exactly That's exactly yeah. it's immediate gratification That's right. generation yeah so. can i just park right in front yeah um last one was what's the difference between silver gold and white fillings well, silver is a misnomer. Uh, there's no silver in the silver colored fillings. Though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're referencing amalgam. Um, and that material, in my opinion, has long since passed its okay. uh, shelf life. But it's essentially four different metal marbles in a mercury stew. Uh, so it's half mercury and, 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 and then four other metals, none of which are silver. Right. Uh, you basically pack them into a hole. Uh, it's friction fit. It's way more responsive to temperature than your tooth is, which means you hit it with cold uh, ice cream, it shrinks more than your tooth. Mm. If you hit it with hot coffee, it grows more than your tooth. So it literally will fracture your tooth over time. Interesting. Better than having a cavity, but now that right. we have 
white materials, right? right? Um, we have the ability to use biochemistry now and actually bond or weld. So you can reinforce those uh, structures. And not every white filling is the same. Mm. Um, there is uh, composite, which is what people think of as fillings, and then right. you can use porcelain. Gold, um, again, the downside associated with gold is you can't bond or weld it predictably to the tooth. So that's, again, a friction fit seal. It's kind of like brick, mortar, brick, and same sort of things. Over time, mm. that mortar will break down. So so uh, do you just use light filling now? Is that sort of the go-to? Well, I haven't done a silver filling since <laughs> uh, the 90s. Oh, okay, uh, so okay. that's, that's been a hot minute. Um and gold is, is uh, it's not very common no. anymore. The por porcelains and the white materials are, have um, been statistically engineered now to behave a lot like tooth. So the, okay. the, the engineering is getting better, basically. Right, which makes sense. Gold back in the day was was quite uh, forgiving and comfortable because right. it's soft, right? right? So it's not hard on your teeth. You can grind on the gold. You, literally, you have patients come in and they've got holes in their gold crowns because they've ground through them. So, yeah. And this is one of my questions. I was just saying, okay. when you when you see rappers mostly when they wear yeah. their gold grills, what are we actually looking at? Like what what is actually happening? Like they're not the teeth that are gold. Like is it an, like something that they fit on their teeth? Like when yes, most okay. commonly it's it's basically handcrafted jewelry that goes right over top of that. Um, what I've always struggled with is. You, you know, if you do orthodontics or you do braces or you, you put in the smallest of little retainers or right. mouth guard, it dramatically changes your speech and yeah. your tongue space. So I don't I don't know how they get around it, quite frankly. It's, it's just, I just see it as a lisp factor. And it looks so uncomfortable. And I always wonder what it was. Is it like, are they actually like ripping their teeth out and putting like gold or is it just no, like something no, that fits it's, over it's your teeth? No, it's like a snap on over top. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I guess if I really thought about it, and I haven't done a grill, no, no. <laughs> but if I really thought about it, you have to have kind of, I would assume, relatively decent alignment of your teeth in order to right. be able to have that happen because it's it's got to slide over top and, and, and then slide back out, right? So if anyone listening and they always wanted a gold grill, we're going to... Come talk to Dr. Mark. We're going to do our first one. We're going to actually do a gold crown. I don't know if, you, I don't know if you've checked the price of gold. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, right. But uh, they bling them up with diamonds and stuff too. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure those guys are, they got the money. So, yeah, I yeah. assume so too. So, yeah. um, so thanks for doing that. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is last time you were here, we actually went and grabbed coffee and we were talking about something and it got me thinking. I thought it was interesting. It was more around foods to avoid. It wasn't specific around teeth that you and I were talking. I think it was like soy or something like that. Or yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but it got me thinking about diet and teeth and if there's a correlation between the two. And so I'm curious, like, does diet or how does diet impact health of teeth and gums? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the old adage that I, I grew up on is you are what you eat, mm. right? So, I mean, the better the food sources that you're consuming and, right. and, and the, the more balanced that is, uh, generally speaking, the more healthy an individual is going to be. People that are, um, you know, co conscious of what they're putting into the body tend right. to take better care of themselves. Right. Fair like, th there's multiple factors that go into that. But, long story short, uh, you know, your body needs. Um, good nutrition in order to be able to repair and to to lay down new tissue because right. all of our bodies are constantly turning over. Maybe not necessarily our teeth. They're right. relatively stagnant. Stuff that you put on the surface of a tooth can change the surface. Uh, once your teeth are in your mouth, though, you should know that they're formed. Right, right. So uh, it doesn't matter how much you know, calcium you're taking or... Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, they are what they are. Yeah. Um, it's more about how you take care of them and, and what you put on top of them at that point in time. Um, so it's it's going to be more to do with your overall immune system, your gut health, um, mm. you know, which is basically 80% of your immune system anyways. Right. And then the overall health of your, your gum tissue and mm. supporting bone. Right? So there's not, there's no like specific food that is like, or vitamins or supplements that are important for actual dental health. Like you said, calcium, like people think, you know, drink your milk, it helps your bones. And like, is there any of that stuff when it comes to? Yeah, something? well, bone's different, right? So bone is constantly right, turning right, over. Right, so, right, okay. you know, wherever you fall on that, and I know there's lots and lots of theories sure, on, sure. on yeah. nutrition, et cetera, and I'm not here to tell. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't, don't want to say anti-milk, pro-milk. I'm, no. I'm, you know, <laughs> do, your, do your research, basically. But yes, you can impact the, the health of your, your supporting structures um, that way. From a tooth perspective, right. Um, 
you know, really what you're looking to do is avoid prolonged exposure to sugar, right? So insidious little things would be fruit or dried out fruit, stuff that gets stuck in places, uh, because basically you can start a timer from the time that you consume sugar. And now if you're like a double double and yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. sugar and you're sipping that over like an hour, right? Yeah. From okay. the last exposure of the sugar, the bacteria has got a 90 minute window where it's consuming the sugar and producing acid. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why we just basically say, you know, if you're a grazer, which is maybe good for right. your nutrition, right. Uh, and, and, and your overall health. So you're not consuming these massive meals. Um, you know, you just have to be careful that you're actually cleaning your teeth afterwards because you can be exposing and exposing and exposing and never really mm -hmm. letting that bacteria stop. Now, there are other products out there like xylitol would be a great one. Uh, so you can use a xylitol based gum or mints and you can, mm -hmm. you know, chew a couple mints or chew some gum afterwards. And it helps. And that xylitol confuses the bacteria that's, uh, you know, processes sugar and, and right. produces the acid. Um, the, the xylitol is taken up by that bacteria. The bacteria gets confused and basically dies. Interesting. Uh, so it's, it's actually, you know, anti-cavity. Huh. Nuts and cheese were the, the ones that I grew up on. Um, oh, okay. That yeah. are also anti-cavity. So you can always do that. That's afterwards. interesting. So I think you got into a little bit. I'm curious on like whether it being, well, we'll get, we, this isn't a science class, but <laughs> like what, what is the sugar doing to your teeth? Is it the acid that's producing that's causing the yeah. issue with your teeth? That's what's happening? Yeah. So there's, uh, you know, there's a strep mutants is the, is the bug that's mm -hmm. in there. And I mean, your mouth is quite honestly, it's the dirtiest part of your body. Right, it's got right. the, the most bacteria <laughs> that you're going to find. But that one in particular is the one that's responsible for cavities. So if it sees carbohydrate, and is able to um, process it, its breakdown product is basically an acid and that acid will uh, essentially erode or chew through that protective layer that you have mm. through your, your enamel. Interesting. Yeah. So is there outside of sugar, obviously, because sugar is the one that you always hear that is like bad for your teeth, cavities, all that sort of stuff. It's bad for your connective tissues. And everything, yeah. yeah. yeah so, totally. so is there other, is there anything else that we should be avoiding? Is there one in particular that we should be avoiding or is sugar really the big one? Like, cause you hear maybe, maybe well, from a stain perspective, coffee we hear, like, is that you true? You can't take away my coffee. No, yeah, you can't. It, it's, to, it's totally true. So the darker things are, uh, strictly speaking, the more likely they are to lay down stain right. and be chromogenic. Things like Coffee and tea will also dehydrate you a little bit. And when things are dry, they're going to pick up more color. Things will get more stuck to them. So there's lots of different ways to um, uh, to think about that. But really that the gnarly or the nastiest combos are when you get sugar and you get acid. So mm. think ketchup, think red wine, uh, those sorts of things. Not only are they hitting you with the sugar, but they uh. also have their own hit of acid. Right? Huh. So... Wow. Yeah. So those are the things, um, you know, and I'm not, again, trying to take away your ketchup or red wine, but. My rum and coke. <laughs> your rum and coke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, coke is a good one. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. So, uh, well, that one, talk about sugar. That's yeah. a whole different episode. Totally. episode but um, is there uh, is there foods or, or drinks that help then? Like, the, let's let's flip. I know we talked a little bit. Is there? I know we talked about supplement stuff, but is there foods that you, you said you said yeah, nuts things, and cheese, which I thought was interesting yeah. after your sugar, and I never heard of. That I mean, before. things like milk in that situation right. because it's basic, right? Which is yeah. the opposite of acidic. Right, would, right. would be helpful. Um, you know, that, that, that's basically what you're looking to do. Um, short of that, you know, dilution is key, right? So mm -hmm. there's even thought processing around, okay, let's, let's say you have some, you know, acid and sugar, right? right? There's a thought process where it's better to kind of swish with some water and dilute that than it is to take a brush and scrub it in. Interesting. Right? Because you can actually, um, while it's sitting on your teeth before you get it off, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. actually do some damage. So Interesting. I haven't seen the hard science on that, but again, yeah, you yeah. said it's not a science class, so I'm just, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm floating it out there. So, um, Yeah, so it's, I, I find interesting the connection between the two because I I, I, th I agree, like I assume that just the healthier you are, the healthier your gums are, the healthier your teeth are, I think that's probably fairly yeah. safe to say. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious now that we've, we've, everyone is running to check their cupboards and fridges um, and see what they have in here. One thing that we hadn't talked about, and I'm going to change a little bit. I'm going to take a left turn a little bit, but sure. um, I want to talk about your team. And oh, okay. Because I think that, I think that's such an important part of your practice. I know you're here, we're talking to you, but when people come visit, 
sometimes it only, you know, if I'm going in for my regular hygiene, I might not even see the doctor, right? The dentist, I'm going to talk sure. to the hygienist. So I, I'm talking a little bit about the roles in your, so if I come into your practice, what are the different roles that are as part that make up your team? Yeah. So, I mean, as you know, yeah. as everybody knows, nobody can do everything. No. Uh, you can't be all places and nor should you try. Yeah. Um, you know, know your lane, stay in it, yeah. do, do it yeah. real, real well. Um, so g- generally speaking, in a dental office, you'll have, you know, some sort of administration, right. you know, team, yeah. whether you call them a concierge, uh, a right. receptionist, uh, yeah. an office coordinator, d- doesn't really matter. The, the role that is the role, which is basically... You know, you're you're um, supporting all of the uh, behind the scenes mechanical elements of, you know, how do we book an appointment? Right, uh, right. How do we pay for things? How do we figure out whether or not my insurance is going to cover it? Yeah. Uh, you know, even you know, how do you take your coffee? Yeah, yeah. All, all of that. Um, in the actual treatment rooms, uh, working with me would be, uh, you know, a certified dental assistant yeah. who's got a, a license and a skill set to, okay. to be able to basically help me do what I need to do, okay. right? Um, the better the assistant is, the more things that they're actually going to be trained in and the less things I actually have to do. And then yeah. the, therefore, the more people I can help, yeah. right? Because I can be somewhere else doing something else. And then you'll also have your hygienists. Uh, hygienists are typically the ones that people um, have the most long-term ongoing relationship right. with. They're the ones that you know essentially clean your teeth. Cleaning your teeth is a bit of a, a misnomer. I mean, they're they're managing you know right, disease right, states, right. etc., disturbing biofilm. Not to get into the science, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, they're not just the talkative people in yeah, the yeah. office <laughs> asking you questions while they got their hands. Yeah, in exactly. Like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. So those, uh, and then of course there's me, right? Yeah. Uh, and there are some things that only I'm licensed to and allowed to to do. So, and it takes it takes all of us in order to be able to. to care completely for somebody right. and you know the better your team is the more versed your team is whether or not they can do a particular thing the the more they understand it the more they can help support because you're right sometimes you'll come in and you, you might have a question for me but you don't have access right, to me right. for whatever reason yeah if they understand the process then they're able to answer your question and give you comfort and support you through the process right so that's in my opinion that's that's what makes a high functioning team and and those are dental assistant and a hygienist are two totally different streams totally. when it comes to like if i'm if i'm starting out into my education you're actually going into two different streams yep mm-hmm. uh, absolutely so um and and two yeah totally different you know program lengths focuses in terms of the things that they'll teach you i mean it's all dentistry at the end right, of the day right, but right. Um, hygienists, you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot, a lot of things that you can't see, you don't really understand right, <laughs> right, right, right. as a, as a patient. So they're, they're learning how to, to recognize those disease processes, manage them, uh, you know, convey that knowledge, uh, to the patient and, and, and help support them on, a, on their personal journey to health. Right. right. Assistant, um, they're going to support me in my process, my understanding, my communication with the patient, but also mechanically on what we're doing. You know, what do we need in order to be able to put the white filling in or right. to get rid of the cavity or to straighten the teeth or um, so that they they have a pretty broad knowledge right. uh, and, and requirement in terms of, of skill set. In, in, you know, a dental assistant, the word assistant, it, are they assisting or can they actually perform for for lack of better words some of the yeah they can they can perform okay right so i mean technically speaking i guess when i graduate and i have my license even though there's nine different specialties right. in in dentistry you know you have your oral surgeons you got right, your right. children specialists your bone gum specialists as a general dentist you're allowed to basically do anything that you feel competent mm. and comfortable and feel like you've got enough uh training in Um, same thing goes for an assistant. So they're not allowed to pick up things like, you know, uh, one of the fast spinning drills and and put a hole (laughs) hole in somebody's tooth to take a cavity out. But but they can help support with, you know, application of some of the things that go back into restoring the tooth. Or, you know, there are lots and lots of things that uh, they're able to do, which quite frankly allows me to be in multiple places at the same time. So I can go and check on somebody in hygiene while they're doing a particular portion of the treatment that they're qualified for, right. and I'll come back and, and you know, finish it off. 
And how big of a how big of a team do you have? Like how, how many people do you have in? Uh, oh, I've ish? got uh, <laughs> three assistants, two admin, three hygiene. So it's that three, six, eight. Eight. And and me makes nine. Wow. And is it hard to fill those roles? Or are we graduating? Hygienists and assistants is a hard to fill. Like, or, uh, or in 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 the Okanagan Valley, um, that is t- team and good team. Yeah, right. right? So right there's a difference right, between enough. team and good team. Yeah, um, yeah, that's at a premium. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're harder harder to find. Quite yeah. frankly, it seems like many many offices are are looking. Mm-hmm. And, Interesting. You know, that's uh, that that makes you appreciate when, yeah, you, when you get yeah, somebody 100%. good. And, and and then it's up to you to nurture that relationship, continue to educate them, you know, raise yeah. them up, have them be as, you know, full and, and well-rounded a, a, yeah. a professional as they can be. Yeah, it's interesting because I think we talked about this already. It just, it's a profession where it's not going to be influenced by AI. You're not going to get AI to do be a, a, a dental assistant or something. A lot of people outsource. You can't outsource right? that, no. that role. Right? You kind of need well, someone there. Yeah, and I mean, of course, AI is the buzz. Sure, uh, sure. So any of the administrative stuff, the thing that's tough slogging in yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we obviously, like everybody else on the planet, I think yeah, it's yeah. going to look to, to yeah. see if we can leverage yeah. that. But the actual hands-on, like, Patients yeah. got to show up. I've got to show yeah, up. Yeah, Teams yeah. got to show up. We we need to accomplish something. Right. It takes people. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? So yeah, AI is not going to replace that. No. Um, last question around team is that uh, how do you work with specialists? So you're working with a patient and you need to refer them out somewhere because it might be something you're not doing. So how do, how do you how does that work? How, how involved are you in that side of it? When once the patient leaves your office and goes somewhere else, and like how involved are you on that side of it? Yeah, well, the involvement starts on the front end. So okay. in order to choose your specialist, right. because there are options, just yeah, like there's for options sure. for dentists. Yeah. Um, no, there's not. There's only one option. For oh, thanks, Rob. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I've shared with you, I was like, I can't be everybody's dentist. Yeah, that's right. right. So, <laughs> Fair enough. I'd uh, like to be the, the, the dentist for the people who... Uh, who need my particular yeah. skill set. Anyways, uh, with respect to the specialists, yeah. you know, uh, those are relationships that I nurture on the front end. So who is a specialist? Right. What is their chair side manner? Like what's their skill set, et cetera. I do yeah. all of that vetting, et cetera. And then in the early days when I'm referring patients, we'll do a lot more uh, conversation in terms of, mm-hmm. hey, when I say this, this is what I mean. Got when it. you say this, this is what you mean. So we know that we're supporting one another because right. it goes back and forth, right? Some some things For I sure. have to do, some things they have to do. Yeah. Um, so the better our relationship is, then the easier that process becomes. Um, and my commitment to all of my patients and hopefully that's the same for everybody is, yeah. you know, uh, I will always put you in the right set of hands and sometimes it's not mine. Right. right? right so, right, so, right. so trying to figure out who's the best person to pull off that, that part of the, the right. treatment and then continually checking in on that relationship and just making sure that we still have shared values and, and, uh, the same sort of ideals and, uh, philosophical, uh, you know, commitments uh, to, to what it is that we're trying to execute. So, and, and I would assume we're in a market that any specialists you work with are here. You're not referring people. You don't have to refer people out of market. Uh, things, correct. Um, I can think of one specialist though that was here that has relocated, mm. and and there are still, and he's gone down to, uh, to to the coast. But in that particular situation, if I see a patient who I legitimately think is yeah. best suited yeah. for that set of hands, you'll make that recommendation. You know, there are medical practitioners, for example, who practice in Penticton. Right, right. right. And I will advocate that. Um, somebody tries to see their way into their hands, yeah. right? Yeah. So my interest in in um, this referral process is best outcome, yeah, best experience, right? If patient Ben says to me, it's like, hey, that's not reasonable. Yeah, uh, I right. can't do that. Okay, fine. We'll check down. Yeah. Uh, there are other other options, mm. um, but I, I always operate from ideal. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I can be sample size of one, but. I was referred on from you and it was an awesome experience. So, um, so it was great. So I mean, that's why I want to talk Good. a little bit about that. Cause I, I assume that it's just, you said like at the start, you need to align with who you're referring to. Totally. They, they need to fit, you know, cause you totally. have a style and you don't want to send someone that doesn't have the same, same, you know, chair sign manners and demeanor. That Again, you have, right? I, I think we talked about it at one point in time, but it's like, you know, I, I've, I've been to restaurants where I've had good food and bad yeah, food. For so sure. there's good yeah, chefs yeah, and bad yeah. chefs. There's, there's, you know, there's, yeah. yeah and sure. I, I'm not saying 
you know, specialists are bad or anything, no, but, but you know, if, if again, you're interested in, in, in getting a particular outcome, then yeah. I think you've got to invest in, you know, uh, finding the person who's going to deliver that. Yeah. 100%. Well, I think that was good. Lots of we we jumped all over the place, but there is some good discussion there. I know you need to get to watch some tennis. I want to watch some soccer, <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up. You got to get on the water. You got you got a busy day. I, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I am not going to watch the tennis on the water though. No, yeah. well, you could though. I I could, good. but uh, I will tell you, I have already donated one iPhone to the bottom of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to do it again. Again, awesome. It's an expensive well, uh, trip to the lake. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining. It was yeah, good. it's and always a pleasure. We'll be back in a couple weeks and everyone else thanks for joining if there are topics you want to hear or questions you have please send them in uh, if not we'll see you again in a couple of weeks thanks right. for joining us